Tomorrow we start our new program for PowerFit. We're gonna call it Renegade. This one is gonna have multiple paths. You're gonna have three different choices. The weightlifting path, the powerlifting path, and the strongman path. The weightlifting path is just the snatch and the clean and jerk, which we'll talk about those that path in a different video. Uh, the powerlifting path is the normal one that we typically do. We did it the whole last cycle. Um, it's our regular back squat, bench press, deadlift, and shoulder press type of movement. Then we have strongman, which is gonna be very, very similar to the powerlifting one, but there are a couple movements switched out for it. Um, some of the regular movements, uh, a couple movements we're gonna be doing more often to be geared towards the strongman style of working out. There are gonna be six days programmed every week for the powerlifting and the strongman path. There are gonna be four main lifting days. On top of those four main lifting days, there's gonna be an active recovery day and a rest day, which makes up the six days. It's just gonna be programmed for the six days in a row. That way you can see the best setup if you can do six days and you like to do six days at the gym. Uh, but if you can't, you can take the four main days and fit them in your schedule however you choose. You can take the six days and rotate them around however you choose. You can take two or three of the lifting days if you uh, want to. You can pick one of the days, whatever your goal is. If your only goal is to make your back squat go up and you only want to do the back squat day, do that. Fit it in your schedule however you want to with the classes or however. But as long as you stay with that for the 11 weeks, you will get your progress on that setup. The only thing I would say that if you do a deadlift day, don't follow it by a back squat day. If you do the back squat day, don't follow it by the deadlift day. Separate those by a day of rest or some other type of day between them, an upper body day, or if you wanna do a back-to-back -back lifting day, do a upper body and a lower body back-to-back -back and then take a day off or switch to something different for a day. Try not to double up on the same body part two days in a row. One last thing about the powerlifting and strongman path when you go to the website, the first page that pops up, that'll be the powerlifting page. That'll have your week posted there. It'll be, it's just like our following cycle beforehand. You have your five or your six days posted there. If you need the strongman path, you will click on menu and then click on strongman tab and it'll bring up the strongman path and it's six days. There will be five parts to every day of our programming. The first part will be our typical warm up which will be geared towards whatever the strength portion is for that day. The second part will be our strength. During that time, you're gonna have a 20 minute strict clock. You're gonna either be looking for a five rep max, three rep max, or one rep max, depending on the day, the movement, and what part of the cycle we're on. Um, the max is for the day. Doesn't have to be a PR. Your guys' folders will have your old five rep max, three rep max, one rep max in there. You're gonna use that as a guideline to take your percents off of to work up and try to see if you can have a PR for the day if you, if you feel good. But if you don't feel good, you need to be looking to hit the highest, the heaviest five rep or three rep or one rep, whatever it might be calling for. Um, which remember, a lot of times I talk about it, somewhere above 90% would be the goal. If that is easy, then you go for the PR. If it's not easy and you don't feel like you got it in you, stay somewhere between 90% and that 102% and you've hit a very heavy rep max for the day. Okay, as long as you're going as heavy as you can for that day, you will get stronger in the long run. So remember, strict 20 minutes, we're looking for a rep max. If it calls for a five rep max deadlift, you're going for a five rep max in that 20 minute time frame, trying to get the heaviest five reps you can. If you got it that day, go for the PR on that five rep max. Okay, the percents for our strength part. So we're gonna have a strict 20 minute clock. These are the percents I'd like you to use to work up they will give you the best opportunity to PR at the end without either running out of time or going too fast and not getting enough rest. Um, the first thing I wanna say though is these percents will be pulled off of whatever rep max you are doing for the day. So if it's a five rep max deadlift, which we have Monday, tomorrow, you will use your five rep max to pull these percents off of, not your one rep or not your three rep. So make sure whatever rep max we might be doing for the day on whatever movement you're on, that is the rep max you are using to use these percents. The first thing you'll see though, we have red, green, and purple colors. So starting out, our red is gonna be our lightweight, kind of warm up, working speed and technique. We're gonna be following the warm up of probably some barbell work. So we're gonna jump right to 30% on our very first minute. 
the red is gonna be done on the minute. So you can see we start at zero, and at the minute mark, we will go to set two. Okay, so you have one minute to do the first set, which is five reps at 30%. Then at the minute mark, we'll go right to our next set at 50%, and we're gonna do three reps. We're only doing two sets in that red where it's kind of light and kind of uh, working the speed and the technique of the movement. Now continuing into the green, so at the two minute mark, we work, go to set three. Set three, we have two minutes, so from two minutes to four minute mark, to do either five, three, or one rep at 60%. Now this is where you're gonna need to know what rep max you're doing for the day, obviously. So if you're doing a five rep max, you'll do five reps at 60%. If you're doing a three rep max, three reps at 60%. If you're doing a one rep max, one rep at 60%. So this set will be whatever reps you are doing for the rep max of the day. When that four minute mark hits, you'll have till the six minute mark to do a set at 70%. Same thing, five, three, or one reps, depending on what your rep max is for the day. At the six minute mark, we will have till the eight minute mark to do two reps at 80%. This is the last of our medium type of weight, kind of getting used to some load, still working speed and technique, but it'll be the last one and we're only doing two reps there. Then we move into the purple, the heavy zone. The purple is always gonna be one reps because I want you to kind of fill the weight out. That way you know if it's heavy and you're not feeling it very good today, you can take a break and then go for whatever rep max it is you're doing. If that one rep feels super fast and super easy, you know to move on to the next part and then try one rep there. So at the eight minute mark, we'll have three minutes to do one rep and 90%. If 90% feels very hard, you're gonna rest until the 11 minute mark and then you're gonna go for your rep max on that next uh, set instead of doing 95%. Because if 90% felt kind of hard and you don't think you can pull off five reps at it, but it, or if you do, it's gonna be very hard to get the five reps, you need to do that at 90%. Because it is a rep max for the day, you don't have to PR. So at the 11 minute mark to the 14 minute mark, you will do the 90% again, and if it's a five rep max, you're going for your five rep max. If it's a three rep max, you're going for your three. If it's a one rep max, you're going for your one rep max there. But again, anything above 90% is good. But let's say that one rep at 90% felt really easy. Then at the 11 minute mark, you move up to 90% and you're doing one rep there. You test it out. If it feels kind of difficult and you don't think you can go up any heavier or get any heavier for that weight, for whatever rep max you're doing, you'll go rest until the 14 minute mark. At the 14 minute mark, you will be going for whatever your rep max is off of that 90%. But let's say 95% feels easy then you'll rest until the 14 minute mark and you'll move up to 98%. 98% will tell you if you should go for a PR or not for sure. So you do that one rep at 98%, it feels super easy, then you're gonna go for your PR in the next set at the 17 minute mark. If uh, that 98% feels super hard, then same thing, at that 17 minute mark, repeat the 98% and do however many reps it is you need to do for your rep max. But let's say it felt easy, at the 17 minute mark, you have till the 20 minute mark, to hit 102%, which will give you a PR. This is the only weight you're gonna hit for a PR. You're not going over 102%. No matter how easy that 102% feels, do not do any more. You've already got a PR. Again, because we're gonna be touching these numbers and these rep maxes multiple times throughout these 11 weeks. There's no need to push your PR so high that you cannot keep PRing throughout these 11 weeks. If you can keep squeaking out five pound maxes every uh, time you touch it, that's gonna give you a bigger gain at the very end. Teach your body how to keep gradually getting stronger, not just real big burst of a PR and then be stuck real underneath that PR and can't PR again. Because we're not testing, we're just going for a max for the day. We will test at the end of the 11 weeks. So just remember, if you get to the 102% and that's where you plan on going because you feel good and you're gonna go for a PR, just get that one PR, call it a day. We'll come back to it in a few weeks and you'll be able to try to beat that one. Our fourth part of the day will be the assistance conditioning. This is the part where you are gonna be breathing hard and working hard. Um, if you're looking to either have better conditioning, keep your conditioning, or even lean out or keep yourself lean, this is the part that's gonna do that. So this is the part you don't wanna skip. This is the part you wanna make sure you go hard on. If this was programmed for the class workout, that's the style of how you should go. If you're in a class and you're pushing yourself to the limit, that's what you should be doing here. It's the same type of thing. It's the same stuff, I, the way I program the classes, it's just gonna be geared towards the main lift of the day. So if it's a squat, a lot of the stuff will be geared towards making the squat better and helping out those little muscles that move the squat. 
And same thing for the bench and the shoulder press and the deadlift. So typical uh, workouts you might see, they depend on the type of rep max we do. So whatever the rep max is, you will see a certain type of workout. Uh, one of them is a work rest. We've done this in the past in the class and in our past programs. That just means we're gonna have a round of three, four movements. You're gonna go through as hard as you possibly can and then you're gonna get a minute and a half to two minutes rest most likely. It's gonna be three or four rounds. Your goal is to hit those hard and fast to where that two minutes doesn't feel like enough rest, but you're getting enough rest that you can repeat that interval as hard as you possibly can. The next one you might see is an AMRAP, which you guys know that. Most likely it's gonna be an AMRAP between eight and 12 minutes. Typical movements, typical CrossFit movements, stuff you'd see in class. Again, you should be moving at a pace that is hard to maintain. You wanna be keeping that, that energy as fast as you can, keeping your intensity as high as you can, and pushing the limits there to make yourself have to adapt and burn more calories so you stay lean and you can maybe build that conditioning up a little bit. Another one you might see are our typical CrossFit style workouts, 21, 15, nine, you might see nine, seven, five, you might see 15, 12, nine, you might see 20, 10, 15, those type of pyramid things. That's where you'll see this kind of stuff. The three or four, three to five rounds for time type of workouts, which we do in the classes. Um, and then also the chippers, the for times, where you just work down the list and that's it. You're, you're gonna see those type of workouts, those Metcons every week depending on what day it lands on for the rep max is where it'll be. So same thing with those, those should be the highest intensity because those are the for time ones. Those don't have a pace. They're normally gonna be eight minutes or less cause they're gonna be full blown sprints. So make sure you put all of it in there. One of the last ones you'll see are EMOMs and or interval work. Uh, this is just gonna be something that gives you a little rest throughout each movement. Uh, you get, you'll get some intensity out of it but it breaks it up a little bit differently way to allow you to sprint a certain amount of reps and get a little bit of rest. Sprint a certain amount of reps, get a little bit of rest. But again, these are all gonna be geared towards whatever the main lift was that day and geared towards helping you stay lean or get leaner during a strength cycle. So make sure you push the limit on these, push the intensity and move fast as you can. Our fifth part of the day will be an optional finisher. Now this fifth part, you don't have to do. It's just there if you have time to do it and you want to do it. Uh, it's usually only gonna be three rounds, possibly could be more sometimes, but for the most part, it's always gonna be three rounds and it's gonna be isolation movements. Um, what that means is, let's say it's a back squat day, and we're gonna isolate the hamstrings and the butt muscles and we're gonna do movements that work just those areas. So it won't be a thruster. Yes, that works the legs, but the thruster also works everything else. So if, it was doing, if we were doing back squat day, an isolation might, movement might be the GHR, where we work the glute ham raise. So it works the glutes and the hamstring, mainly the hamstrings, okay? Um, if we were doing bench press day or shoulder press day, we're gonna isolate the triceps, isolate the chest, and isolate the shoulders. So we're gonna do movements, the typical bodybuilder style movements will be done here to isolate those muscles. That way we can build them up a little bit, keep them healthy. Um, you'll see bicep curls on deadlift day. Uh, you don't. You do a lot of tight pulling with your deadlift on the biceps, and we don't want to happen to get a tear or some kind of injury to the bicep tendon. So, a lot of the times it's going to be more geared towards bodybuilding stuff during this time, so we can keep those joints and those ligaments healthy in that area while we lift heavy. But again, this is optional and done only if you have time for it. You don't have to do it. So don't feel like if you didn't do it, you're missing out on something. It's good to do it, but it's the last option that you need to put in there if you have a time crunch. All right, the last part I wanna talk about are your folders. Inside your folders, you'll find your papers that we typically track stuff with. Um, it's gonna be a lot easier this cycle. There's not a lot to track, but you have it for a guideline and to track if you PR. So it's gonna look something like this where you have your strength work at top, so your deadlift, your push press, your back squat, and your bench press. And then you're gonna have your five rep maxes, three rep maxes, and your one rep maxes for each movement. And then you also have this big assistance chart and another one on the back side to keep track of any assistance work. In that assistance, I have put your front squat and your push press as well. 
The front squat and the push press, they'll never change, so you won't even have to mess with those. Those are just there so you can look at them real quick for the percent work being done on the secondary movements or maybe even the assistance conditioning. Up top, you're gonna have your best five rep, best three rep, and your best one rep max. I wrote it in there for you. I pulled it off the iPad or based on what you gave me for uh, your last set of PRs. All of you pretty much had a one rep max. Some of you didn't have a three rep or a five rep or it wasn't that updated. So I took your one rep max and did what you are capable of for your three rep and your five rep. That way you have a good base to start out with and try to beat. So each week, whenever you got a rep max, if it's a five rep, three rep, or one rep, you can look at this paper. You can do your pull your percents that we went over earlier off of these numbers. And then if you PR, change the numbers. If you don't PR, don't change the numbers. So the only time you're gonna be changing these numbers is if you happen to PR. Down here on the assistance work, this is where you'll keep track of all your assistance conditioning numbers. You don't have to track that because I'm gonna be putting the numbers on the website for you that I want you to try to attempt. So let's say it's a wall ball and a kettlebell swing workout. I'll give you the weight of wall ball you should be using and the weight of the kettlebell you should be using. But I will also give you two different scaling options. So if the original weight is too heavy and it doesn't allow you to move the way I want you to, you can pick from the second or the third one. If you pick a scaling option, that's where you should write it down. Because then you need to know that next time that workout comes up or workout like that, you can look at what you did last time and maybe try to go a little heavier than that up from the scaling option. If you do the original number, you don't need to write that on if you don't want to. You can, but you don't have to. So as far as assistance conditioning goes, track what you want, but most of the time I'm gonna be posting the numbers I want you to get. If you PR, write it in, erase the number, put the new number down. If you don't PR, leave the best one down. For the strongman, you guys will have pretty much the same paper. You'll just have a slightly more range of main lifts because yours are gonna rotate a little bit more. So you'll see a longer list of heavies with five and three and one reps. They're gonna be things like deficit deadlifts, um, pause back squats. We don't have numbers for those, so a lot of those will be blank for you guys and you'll have to figure them out as we do our 20 minute rep max work. And then you can fill in those blanks. And when we come back to them, if you PR, change the number. If you don't PR, leave the best number you got.